Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be playing with a ton of new makeup products, but this isn't necessarily gonna be like a first impression type video because a lot of the products that I'm gonna be talking about today are actually products that I've used before, but they're still, you know, new in the makeup world, so I wanted to bring them on camera, just tell you guys my thoughts on them, but I do also have a few other products here that I haven't tried before, so I will be giving you guys my first impressions on them, and then, very exciting. I'm going to be giving you guys my second impression on the new by Beauty Foundation. I just recently did a whole review and first impression on that. And in that review, I mentioned that I really wanted to try that foundation with my typical like base and prep routines because I just felt like it would perform even better on my skin. And I said that I was going to do it on Instagram, but I figured why not just do it in another video? So here we are. Just wanted to let you know, I am wearing a different shirt in like the rest of the video and that's because I just had to refilm this intro and I ended up changing my shirt and I just didn't change back into it. So in case you're confused, that's why I'm wearing two different shirts. So I hope that you guys are gonna enjoy today's video. Let me know down below in the comments if you've tried any of the products that I talk about today. Give me your own review on them. I always love hearing what you guys have to say. If you you know think differently than I do, if you agree with me, just let me know down below. Of course, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed videos like these so that I know to do more. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we're starting off with nothing on my face. I did, however, do my brows because I don't really have any new brow products to try out. I figure I'll just get those out of the way. So the first thing that I wanna do is not necessarily try a new product, but try a new product in a different way. So recently I did a first impression and review of the new By Beauty Change Maker Foundation. And in the video I mentioned that I really wanted to try the foundation, but using my typical skincare routine. So this particular routine is Amazing. It really has completely changed the game for me as far as how my foundation sits and lasts and just looks on my face. So if you also have a dry textured skin type and you're trying to figure out how to make your foundation look less dry or how to just, you know, make your foundation look amazing on your skin, this has been the routine that has been working so, so well for me. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to spray my Youth to the People Adaptogen Soothe and Hydrate Activated Mist. So this is essentially kind of like a hydrating serum, but it's in a mist form. So it's just super easy to spray on the face before starting your skincare routine or even after applying your makeup just to kind of settle your makeup down. It kind of does the same thing that Max Fix Plus would do, but it's definitely more hydrating. So once I have that applied, I like to go in and apply my moisturizing product. So I'm gonna go in first with my Fresh Rose Hydrating Eye Gel Cream. I really like this product specifically for underneath my makeup because it's a gel, it's not super heavy and it just sits really well underneath concealer. Sometimes if you use an eye cream that's a little bit too thick or creamy, your concealer could almost like pill on top of it. So I like to apply that right in this area over here and even on my eyelids, because my eyelids get so dry. And even around the edges of my lips because the skin that's around your lips is just as thin as the skin that's around your eyes. So whatever cream you put there, you should put around your lips as well. For my moisturizer, this switches up from time to time, but my Laneige Water Bank Moisture Cream, as you guys probably know, is one of my favorites. I like this specifically for underneath makeup because similar to the fresh, um, eye gel cream, it just kind of sinks into the skin. It doesn't leave too much of like a thick residue. Because I do actually like to go in with a oil after my moisturizer, I don't like to use a moisturizer that's too thick or greasy or oily because otherwise it just becomes too much on my face. So I like something that's really nice and lightweight and this stuff is beautiful. So next I'm gonna apply my oil. This is my Apple Oils Midnight Boost Hydrating Facial Oil. This is another one of my secret weapons. I apply this before every single makeup application. Sometimes oils can be a little bit tricky, especially in the way that they perform underneath makeup. Um, some oils will actually break up your makeup, which is not what you want. You want an oil that's simply going to hydrate and that's not actually going to interrupt whatever makeup you put on top. Um, and I've also experienced a lot of oils that break me out. So Apple Oils obviously doesn't do that for me. It's fantastic. I love it. I talk about them all the time. So once I finish applying my oil, my skin is officially prepped. So now I'm going to go into my go-to everyday primer and that's my Ola Henriksen Banana Bright Face Primer. As you guys know, I'm not huge on primers, especially for day-to-day, -day, but this is one of the few primers that I actually feel like makes a difference in the way that my foundation looks. I do kind of feel like this almost brightens up my skin a little bit and gives me a little bit of an extra glow without this being, you know, a typical glowy primer. But I do find that this does give a really subtle sheen to the skin that just makes your skin look nice and healthy. 
So now I'm going to go into the Change Maker Foundation. So we're gonna be using the shade number L30 today, same one that I used last time. So you can see in the review that I did that I really did enjoy this foundation. This is what one layer of the foundation looks like. So I think I was right to think that my routine was going to make me like this foundation more because I think that it looks really, really beautiful and even nicer than it looked in the initial video that I did about it. It really just melted into the skin really well, especially since I know how well it wears throughout the day. You can see in the review that I did, I wore it I think for like eight hours and it just looks so nice by the end of the day. So I do think that this really passed the test for me. I'm definitely going to be including this in my foundation rotation. I have like a collection of maybe four or five foundations that I switch between. They're foundations that I know no matter what, if I put them on my face, it's gonna look good and I think this is gonna be one of them. So that's it for the foundation. Let's talk about some new concealer. This is the new Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer Pen. I have two shades here, one that I'm gonna use to bronze and one that I'm gonna use to obviously conceal with. So this concealer is interesting because I feel like there are kind of conflicting claims within the description of this product. It's described as a buildable matte formula with high coverage, but it's also described as a creamy natural finish concealer with powerful skincare ingredients that even has hyaluronic acid in it. So this is supposed to be kind of like a hydrating but still full coverage and buildable matte concealer. I feel like a matte high coverage formula and something that's also natural looking and hydrating doesn't normally go together so I'm interested to see if that's going to be the case. I have a dry skin type so it's going to be a perfect test to see how these do perform. So this is literally a pen format so the concealer is right over here and then you click the bottom to kind of lift the concealer up and out of the packaging. So I did swatch this on my hand and it feels like a really thick formula. So I'm a little bit nervous about it. I don't want to apply too much because I don't want to set myself up for failure. So I'm just going to kind of dot a little bit of the product right underneath my eyes. I really don't want to apply too much. I feel like your natural instinct, especially with a product that is in a stick form like this, is to draw on a lot of product, but I really feel like that's gonna create a really heavy look underneath the eye, so I'm really gonna try not to do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just blend that out with my sponge. That color is so wrong for me. I need to get another color. One second. This is a great example to show you how wrong a concealer can look when it's too light for your skin. I feel like it, it almost makes it look worse. Like I would rather just have dark circles than to have that super weirdly highlighted bright under eye. Like I feel like it just looks so weird. So that was chiffon. I'm gonna take Creme Cafe, which it should be a little bit darker and a little bit peachier. Yeah, that's much better. It's actually blending out a lot easier than I expected. I thought that this would be a super kind of like thick concealer to work with. I can tell right away though that I do not like this. <laughs> It's weird because in the description of the product, it says that it's crease free, but with a product that's this thick and creamy, you're pretty much guaranteed to get some creasing because it's so thick, it's just going to settle into the lines that you have underneath your eyes. And I don't know if you guys can see, but it definitely is. It's just not a super flattering concealer. I don't know, I'm really not loving this so much right now. I also feel like the coverage isn't so great. This is supposed to be a full coverage concealer, but you could definitely still see like blue and green underneath my eyes, especially considering it's such a thick formula. You would think that it would cover really, really well at least, but it doesn't. So definitely not my favorite for underneath the eyes, but that's not to say that it's not gonna be good for around the face. So I am gonna highlight a bit with this and just kind of see how it sits on the rest of my face. It's important to remember that not all concealers are going to be good for everything. Some concealers are going to be better for the face, some will be better for underneath the eyes. My favorite concealers are the ones that are great for both just because it makes it so you don't have to use as many products. And with this concealer, from what I can tell so far, I think this is a concealer that excels more so on the face than it does underneath the eyes. So now I want to see if this is going to work well as a cream bronzer. So this is the shade Coffee. I swatched this on my hand earlier and I thought it would work perfectly as a bronzer shade. So I think I think I'm just going to dot it where I would want it. I don't really want to disturb my foundation too much, so I'm not going to swipe. Let's just do one side at a time because I don't want it to set down before I have time to blend it out. 
So that's what that looks like. It applied and blended with no issues. So that did definitely work as a cream bronzer. It applied and blended well. My, my concern was that it was going to look patchy, but it doesn't look patchy at all. Will I use this again as a cream bronzer? Probably not. Being that this is, you know, a concealing product, it is a heavier product. And when I do, you know, use a cream bronzer, I do like those formulas that are a little bit more lightweight and almost have some translucency to them. I feel like they just look so much more natural on the skin. Um, so if I wanted to cream bronze, I would probably just go towards the cream bronzers that I typically like and go for. So I kind of want to intensify my bronzer just a little bit. So I'm just going to go into my Hoola bronzer from Benefit and just apply a little bit of that on top of where I already put that cream. So now let's talk about blush. I am so excited about these. This is from a new MAC collection. They came out with a new blush formula that's very reminiscent of like a ColourPop blush. So it's kind of that like cushiony, bouncy blush formula. These are so freaking gorgeous. I did already try one of them, the shade over here that I wanted to specifically recommend if you're a big fan of nude blushes because this is unreal. It's such a gorgeous blush and I immediately put it in my everyday vanity because I just love it so much. So this formula is called the Glow Play Blush and like I said, it's kind of that like bouncy, creamy texture. So this is a color so natural. This is the most gorgeous, neutral, natural looking blush I've tried in a very, very long time. So this is kind of like a light nude bronze is there like a peachy tone in here? Yeah, there's like a kind of like a slight peachy tone and the glow that this blush has as you can see like when I shift it back and forth It kind of has like that really really pretty sheen it takes this blush to a whole nother level So this one is called grand and I feel like it's one step above so natural It's still a really nice very natural looking blush color But it obviously does have more of a rosy tint to it So you are going to add more color to your cheeks with this color and then the third shade over here is called that's peachy And obviously it's the brightest shade of the three and it also has has that gorgeous little sheen. So these are stunning. So I'm first gonna apply So Natural to the majority of my cheek. Now I was trying to experiment to see what the best way was to apply this blush because since it's not like a typical blush formula, um, I tried it with my fingers, didn't love it like that. I do like to apply it though with kind of like a dense synthetic brush. This one over here is a Real Techniques contour brush and I feel like it works really well for a product like this. I'm just gonna kind of pat the brush into the blush. And then you just want to pat it, don't swipe onto the cheeks. Look how stunning this color is. It's very, very, very natural looking. It almost barely looks like you're wearing blush, but it adds that perfect, perfect hint of a flush to your cheeks. And that sheen really translates so well on the face. You almost don't even really need to put a highlighter. So now I am going to apply one of these brighter shades on like the apples of my cheeks just to add kind of like a pop. So I think I want to try this guy because it's really bright and I want to see how wearable I can get it. So I'm going to take the same brush, just pat, pat into it and then just very lightly dab it right on the apples. So that's a really gorgeous color. Wow, wow, wow. What I think is so pretty about this, and I think it has to do with this formula in particular, is that it gives you that like bright blush look, but because of the formula, because it has that glow, and because it applies, you know, not in a heavy way, I feel like it's still so, so wearable. I also have a highlighter from the same new MAC collection. This is the Extra Dimension Skin Finish in Postmodernist Peach. And I thought that this was just a really, really pretty color and I just like the way it looked. I'm very interested to see what it's gonna look like on. I don't think I've been this excited about a new MAC collection in a very, very long time. So I'm just gonna take that on a fluffy highlighter brush. I'm just gonna put that right, right on the top of that cheekbone. That is pretty. I do really like that it's not crazy metallic. It's just kind of adding a nice little glow. And I think because it does have those peachier undertones, it just melts really well with the blush so it doesn't look like it's standing out too much. Also, I just want to note, the more I'm looking at my bronzer, the more I hate the color of it. <laughs> so definitely not a fan of that concealer as a bronzer. Not my favorite. 
All right, time to move on to the eyes. I'm gonna be using one of the new Fenty Beauty Snap Shadow Palettes. If you did not know, Fenty just released quite a few little eyeshadow palettes that are really cute and small. Each palette comes with six different shadows and each one has a very specific color story. This one in particular is peach. I have tried a couple of the other palettes over the last few weeks, just trying to kind of test it out and see what the eyeshadow formula is all about. And I gotta say, I am really enjoying these palettes. I think the formula, for the most part, for all the shadows that I've tried have been really great. And I think what I like most about them are the size. They're super small, so they just fit so effortlessly within a makeup bag. I actually just traveled with one of these. I think it was the number one, like the neutral one, and I loved it because it just didn't take up any room in my travel makeup bag, and I had everything that I needed in this like small little tiny package. Now, what makes these a little bit different, and actually the reason why they are called Snap Shadows, is because you can take two palettes, and stick them together. So you could essentially kind of customize your own little palette and you end up having 12 different eyeshadows, six on one side obviously, six on the other. So that's kind of cool because you could have, you know, one palette more for every day and then you're more like going out nighttime palette in this small little convenient packaging, which I think is really genius, honestly. So I'm first gonna go into the shade Bellini Baby, which is this one right over here. It's a nice matte peach. And I'm just gonna put that above my crease to act as the transition shade. And I'm using that on a JH30 brush from Morphe. For day to day, honestly, I do really like these small little palettes. I feel like it just makes getting ready so much easier because it gives you less options to be confused by. <laughs> Sometimes if you have too many options, that's not always a good thing. Okay, now I'm gonna go into a more precise blending brush. This is my Smith 230 and I'm going to grab this shade right over here. My bad, I actually messed up the name. The first shade that I used was called Peach Me and I'm gonna go in with Shoot Your Shot, which is this nice darker matte peach. And I'm gonna apply this all over my lid and into my crease. For my lid, I kind of want to try out this bronzy shade called High Pumpkin. It's really pretty. I think it's gonna layer nicely over that matte. So I'm gonna apply that with my finger. I find a lot of the metallics apply best with the finger. They just apply a little bit more intensely. Oh yeah, that does apply really nicely on top of that matte color. It's kind of just like a copper shade. So now let's try out a new eyeliner from the drugstore. This is such beautiful packaging. I've never really seen anything like this, especially from the drugstore. I feel like this just looks super luxe. This is the new L'Oreal Matte Signa Tube Eyeliner. The applicator is a little bit on like the stiff side, so we'll see how that works in applying, but it looks really nice and fine at the, at the end. So hopefully I get a nice, a nice precise win with this. I'm really disappointed though. Uh, the formula kind of sucks. <laughs> Shit, that's super annoying. I really like the applicator of this. I found that it made applying the eyeliner so easy. Like I created that wing in no time at all and it looks pretty perfect, but the actual formula kind of is not so great. I feel like it's not very black. It almost looks like a dark gray. The brush also dried out super quickly. Like I had to re-dip my brush multiple times in order for me to create that one wing. And it's also not applying as smoothly as I would like. And when I layer it, it almost like lifts the eyeliner that I already applied. So I'm sad. So now time to move on to mascara, another new product from Fenty Beauty. It's called the Full Frontal, very cute packaging. I'm really excited to try this out. It's the very first mascara that Fenty has ever launched. And I've also been hearing a lot of people talk about it um, because the wand is pretty different than really anything have I seen anything like this? I'm sure there's been something like this at some point, but I haven't really tried a mascara one that's exactly like this in recent memory, so looking forward to trying it out. What makes this a little bit different is that there's pretty much two sides to the wand. There's the fat side, so when you turn it this way, it's nice and fat, and then when you turn it like that, it's nice and skinny. So the whole idea is that you're able to get, you know, like really voluminous lashes and then lengthy lashes, just depending on how you hold the brush. So I'm first going to hold it on the skinny side to really lengthen the lashes. So far that has not really impressed me so much. Hate to say it, but I feel like that didn't really do much to my lashes. I'm gonna try not to make judgments too soon because you do have to use both sides. So now I'm gonna switch it to the flat side and see what happens. Oh, whoa, okay, that really, 
gives that little bit of extra drama to the lashes for sure. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I feel like it definitely made my lashes look really bold and intense, but it's not my favorite my lashes have ever looked. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of like clumpier lashes. I prefer it when my lashes look really like fluttery and separated. Whereas I feel like this mascara really made my lashes kind of clump up a little bit. So it looks almost thick at the tips of my lashes, which I don't really love. Oh my God, I have so much mascara on my lid. Ignore that for now. I'm going to scrape it off once it dries, but not really a big fan. I feel like it just made my lashes look a little bit clumpy and messy. Okay, so the face is pretty much done. It's time to finish the look off with the lips. I really want to talk about these new Gucci matte lipsticks because they are so stunning. I have been wearing this particular shade in a few of my recent videos. I think in my last two or three videos, I wore uh, the Painted Veil. I got quite a few questions asking me what was on my lips. It was this guy. It's a really beautiful pinky, deeper, deeper nude shade. If you are a fan of matte lips, but you wanna wear a matte lip color that isn't drying, these are fantastic. They're actually quite similar to like the Lisa Eldridge Velvet, Velvet lipsticks. They have a very similar texture to them, and they are also very, very long wearing and they wear really, really well throughout the day. I wore this red shade to a dinner. Um, this is in the shade Lisa Red and I did not have to retouch throughout the entire dinner. I looked at my lips at the end and they were perfect. What I really like doing often with my makeup is juxtaposing my eyeshadow to my lip color. So I have this really kind of like summery, bright coral shade on my eye and I'm going to contrast that with a very heavy cool tone brown lipstick. I feel like it's just gonna look really cool. So obviously this is a lip color that's definitely not for everybody, but I think it's super cool and different. And if you like brown lipsticks, this is a really cool kind of tone to wear because it is so cool toned. I just think it's very edgy. And I just think it looks actually quite beautiful with the, with the orange on the eyes. Let me know in the comments what you think of this little combo. So for something that's definitely a lot more wearable, I have, again, one of the new lipsticks from that new MAC collection that I mentioned earlier. This is the shade Fleur de Coral. There's my French accent, everybody, so bad. <laughs> so I did try this yesterday and I really, really enjoyed this formula. It's kind of like a sheer, balmy formula. It's very hydrating and, it, and the color is really pretty too. It's like a soft, peachy pink. I do find that this color definitely calls for a lip liner though. So we're gonna just line my lips really quickly with Boldly Bare. That is it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Again, let me know all of your thoughts down below on any of the products that I use today. What are your experiences on them? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Leave me your reviews down below. Hit the thumbs up button and of course subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.